With the Commoner Battle Hardened in Portland happening in just about a month, I wanted to go ahead and talk a little bit about how I feel the current meta of Commoner has been taken and what you might even see at the top tables of the very first Battle Hardened event for the Commoner format. Let's go ahead and take a look at these heroes and maybe see if it's something that you want to pick up if you happen to be visiting Portland for the 50th calling of Flesh and Blood. Welcome on In My Ash Wings. It is such a pleasure to have you all here today with me. It's late at night. I have cards on my windowsill. Life is good. And more importantly, what is good is the fact that we live in a time where Commoner is getting a battle heart. That's right. If you don't already know, Calling in Portland is happening in November. And at the same calling, if you end up not wanting to get into that calling, or maybe you drop out of the calling day one because you don't think you're going to make day two, you can go ahead and join into the Battle Hardened that is a commoner format event. Now, to my knowledge, this is the very first tier three event that the commoner format has ever gotten. So it is certainly something that is very, very special, and it's being held at none other than the 50th calling to ever exist in Flesh and Blood's history. So while I'm wishing a lot of good luck to those who are battling it out in the calling, I certainly wanted to take today's video to talk about how I personally believe the meta of Commoner to be and something you might want to look into if you're looking to join in on this event. As a battle hardened always is at this point, you do have a PTI on the line when you are winning this event. You can take a look at the wonderful prizes you'll be getting for winning in this commoner format. A total of $500 for first place, a battle hardened series exclusive playmat, a PTI, and a gold foil legendary black envelope. And the second place even takes home $500, a PTI, and the playmat. Everybody else is still getting cash prizing at the end of this year, and it's super cool to see because normally, whenever you see these commoner events at any of the callings that exist throughout or, or pro tours or any of that, there is now a gold foil on the line during those callings, or during the commoner side events, I should say, during the callings. But those gold foils are actually just very, you know, they're commons, they're rares, they could be majestics, which are all still fantastic wins. But at the end of the day, that's all you're really getting at a commoner event there for that gold foil. It's the biggest commoner event that could happen at a flesh and blood scene. And it's very, very cool to see everybody battle it out. I love seeing the tournament reports from when those happen. But with this, there's a lot on the line. Again, a PTI is a you know, an invite to a professional tournament so it can get you an invite into the pro tour, an invite into nationals or any of that stuff just by playing commoner. And on top of it, you also get at first place a gold foil legendary piece, right? It could be anything. And I know that for the calling, they're giving out a gold foil um, crown of providence. Gold foil crown of providence is being given out at the calling in Portland. So it is very, very cool to see that they're at least giving legendaries out to commoner folks, right? People who are going to commoner. Not to mention the fact that Portland itself is a huge mecca for all of the commoner fans. It's a huge commoner scene out in Portland. So I think it's really cool to see that everything is being done over there. And I, I'm sure everybody's going to have a fantastic time. This is something that has been long awaited for a lot of commoner fans, including myself. And so I'm very curious to see who takes the cake. But what I wanted to talk about today is my personal picks, for the top five heroes you should be playing when you are going to a commoner event. Now, this can be at your local game store. This can be at a buddy's house if you're just looking to play commoner there. But this is kind of a deeper dive into the actual meta of the commoner format. And so I wanted to get a pulse check and kind of let me know what you guys think about all this. I've been playing commoner for quite some time recently, just did a whole bunch of stuff on, um, you know, 
things for the Rosetta Heroes in Commoner. If you guys haven't checked that out, go check that out. And I plan to continue making more Commoner videos because it's seriously one of the greatest entry points into Flesh and Blood. And I feel like it's really, really important that it is showcased as it should be. But let's talk about my top five picks. Let's go ahead and start with the bottom at number five. And then we'll move our way on up to what I believe is going to be the number one pick for the pros at this battle hardened. So at number five, I actually have kind of a mix of two heroes, both of them sharing the same talent and the same class, but playing a little bit differently in their own separate way. First, let's go ahead and talk about Oldham. I believe that Oldham is still a very fantastic pick for the entirety of the commoner format here. Um, you know, I don't believe we're getting anything different in Jarl. I believe Jarl actually comes out in December and not November. So we're not going to be getting any kind of special, you know, uh, uh, common or anything that's coming out of there. No special rare in their equipment suite. So you're not going to be seeing any new ice stuff happening. But with Oldham being an earth and ice hero in the commoner format, uh, especially with his hero power being able to provide additional defensive value or even being able to disrupt your opponent's wide chain of attacks is really important to the overall game plan of Oldham. Uh, I do believe that Fatigue Guardian is certainly still something that is a threat into the overall game plan of the commoner format. And I do think that it is going to be something that you might even run into uh, strictly because a lot of people are playing what I personally believe to be an honorary mention here being Dash. Um, Dash is very, very good at being the hyper aggressive deck and really just plowing through their opponent with nearly everything they've got. Um, so it is going to be a deck that I'm certain people are going to be running and, you know, you just got to be aware of it, right? Uh, and also in that same vein, on top of just talking about Elemental Guardians, I also wanted to give a little shout out to Terra. I do believe that Terra has quite a good amount of legs into this format, strictly because being able to create that might token at the beginning or, you know, whenever they're they're paying one at the end of their turn to get that might token if they pitched an earth card. That's going to be incredibly helpful for when they end up having cards like Concuss or Command Respect, or more importantly, the probably number one card you're going to be running inside of Terra, which is Thump. Thump is just an absolutely destructive card that will end games. It will make sure to throw tempo into the hands of the Terra player. And especially if you can find ways to recur that and also have your armor block out efficiently, I do certainly think that it is a deck to be reckoned with. And uh, you'll probably see a lot of that there too. The next hero I want to talk about is actually at our number four spot. And this is a hero that has made quite a absolute shift in power in regards to, uh, I didn't expect this hero to be as good as they are in commoner. Let's just put it this way. And that hero is none other than Enigma. Enigma has been tearing up Commoner for quite some time now. And that's strictly because Reality Refractor is a weapon that you can use on Enigma. The two cards that win Enigma most of these games is Reality Refractor, your weapon, and Spectral Manifestations. Spectral Manifestations is pretty much the way that when your opponent destroys all of your other auras and leaves you with nothing, you can still come in and play up Spectral Manifestations, pitch a blue or make or make one resource at all. You can pitch a red in that same sense. You can swing with a, a, uh, a Spectral Shield with plus three counters and it comes in for eight damage. Now, if they protect that same shield for three turns, there's not a lot you can do and you're kind of stuck into they essentially swap out their actual weapon for the spectral shield. And in doing so, their weapon now says pay one resource attack for eight. And that is way over rate. It's a way, way, way crazy powerful. Not to mention they can also give it more counters with your um, uh, uphold tradition, the arm piece, 
uh, that Enigma gets access to as a Mystic Illusionist, there's a lot of value that can be played onto this. And so they play Spectral Manifestations, and they protect them with a whole bunch of defense reactions, a whole bunch of ways to block out attacks to save those. So if you have a way to blow up Ward, perfect. But it is very effective. And it certainly is taking on a lot of different heroes. Um, but Enigma's doing super great into the format right now, uh, but we'll see whether or not she ends up actually taking it home at the Battle Hardened in Portland. Now, these next two heroes I'm gonna talk about are actually pretty, uh, they're pretty up there, right? I would say if you are considering my spots four and five to be A tier heroes, um, these next three I'm going to be talking about are S tier, but the next two you might already know. For our number three spot, I'm actually going to go ahead and choose Icelander. I believe Icelander is still a great contender into the format, and much like with any wizard, if you as the opponent do not know how to properly block out arcane damage in a certain way, when to take this amount of damage as opposed to this amount of damage, it is going to be really difficult for you to understand that you're, you shouldn't just be able to throw your whole hand away. Icelander is going to be able to play cards on your turn and also on her turn. On, her, on an Icelander turn, in most cases, it's just put an ice card, a blue ice card into Arsenal and pass. But sometimes they have access to things like Wounded Bull. And now they even have access to Findel's Fighting Spirit. So as long as they're still playing that Goliath Gauntlet, they can still come in with a really powerful attack and allow you to make a decision on, oh, you know, maybe you didn't expect to do all of this blocking and you expect to just pitch a bunch of cards. But if your cards don't block very well, they can't block physical well enough. And if you're playing too many reds, you're not going to be able to block out the cards that are coming in for damage on Icelander's side. So it's a very, very tight matchup, and you have to kind of race them before they get the ball rolling and they do a lot more damage to you. Not to mention that Aether Icefane is an insanely powerful card. This card does a lot of work in the format. And frankly, if again, if you're, if you're not sure on how to properly block out this card, or how to prevent a little bit of damage while also saving a card in your hand. Um, it is really, really rough, and you're probably going to feel the wrath of that pretty quick. So pro tip, if they come in with an Aether Ice Vein for whatever amount of damage and they fuse it, if the, the card is fused, it will gain its second ability. And at that point, you can pitch a blue to block out one point of damage there to save you just a little bit on life. And then you can use the remaining two floating resources to prevent its on hit ability of making you discard a card. So you're taking a little bit of damage in this regard, but you're also getting to keep a card in your hand for your turn, which is incredibly effective. So keep that in mind when you're going against Icelander. It's probably like the one tip I can always give anybody for. The next hero we're going to talk about is very infamous in the uh, flesh and blood commoner format and honestly a hero that I would imagine a lot of you would have expected me to put in first place and that's actually going to be Ira. I believe Ira sitting at the number two spot is pretty comfortable. The reason being is because she is just incredibly consistent in what she does. I mean truly just consistent. You're able to do a ton of things with her and just be able to throw out a whole bunch of Kadachi, Kadachi, five power attack, or Kadachi, seven power attack, or, you know, Kadachi, Kadachi, you, you've got her specialization, right? Whirling Mist Blossom, which in most cases never hits, but when it does, right? When you get a Kadachi, Kadachi, Whirling Mist Blossom, and then your opponent goes, okay, well, I'm just going to block for two because... I don't need to block it, block it out fully because it's just too damage. And then you get razor reflexed. Somebody razor reflexes their whirling mist blossom. I promise you, you are in for a bad time. So just overall, it's something to keep in mind for when you're looking at this. But Ira has the most consistency in the entirety of the format. 
and I do truly believe that she is a contender for first place, uh, but you'll definitely be seeing her in the top eight. That is for sure. Uh, the same goes with Icelander. You'll more than likely see Icelander in the top eight. Um, like I said, these top three heroes, if they're the three of the top eight heroes, they're, they're all going to be represented. I wouldn't be surprised if every single one of these heroes is represented, but at least I know these three will. Icelander, Ira, and then our number one pick, my own personal number one pick for the commoner format as of right now, with no bias at all, is Chain. I believe that Chain, even with the Stubbies ban, is still incredibly powerful. And we've seen that in prior gold foil events that have happened in other countries at Callings. Ever since Rosetta, Chain has been able to take on a whole slew of different ways to play them. And it is, you're essentially going into a situation where you're not sure what you need to do. You know that most of these chains are going to be running Rosetta Thorn, already the best Runeblade weapon in the game right now. But more importantly, what they have access to now is a way for them to destroy their soul shackles with Deadwood Dirge. Deadwood Dirge now means that they're no longer on a clock of self mill in order for them to eventually destroy their opponents. They can create a soul shackle, destroy said soul shackle, come in with an attack, and then just do it all over again, right? And now, obviously, the soul shackle is going to give the next rune blade or shadow action go again. So you're going to want to make sure that you use a Deadwood Dirge when you already have a Soul Shackle. That way you can play Deadwood Dirge, destroy your Soul Shackle, create a Soul Shackle with Chain's ability. Then you get to utilize cool things like Phantom Banshee. If you want to play Runegate cards, you can play Runegate in Chain, come in with a Phantom Banshee, three Rune Chance, seven damage, go again, pay two resources, Thrill of Skull Form, seven damage you, you've dealt you've dealt 17 damage in one turn casually for three cards i mean it's four cards theoretically but th the concept here is that if you can get those rune gate cards in there they're going to be a lot of power but there's also the downside of the fact that there are still chain builds that are doing very well in commoner that don't rely on rune chance. So in most cases, you have to make a guess. You have to make an educated guess. Is your opponent going to be running a rune chant build, right? If they are, do you run AB1 or AB2, right? Because AB2 can at least help you with Rosetta Thorn. AB1 helps block out those rune chants. But if you run AB1, and they're not playing any rune chance at all, you can at least block one of the damage from Rosetta Thorn. But in most cases, you're still getting damage leaked through anyway. So blocking or using using two cards for Arcane Barrier is probably the best bet into chain, even if he doesn't run any of the special new Deadwood Dirges or anything like that. But He's a very versatile hero. And he's really going to be able to provide a lot of power onto the form. I mean, again, 17 damage. That's not even like the most casual thing. You have hit the high notes is another card that just came out. A cheaper version of Shrill, essentially. Rune Rager Swarm, which allows you to... You've created that Soul Shackle. You can play that Shrill of Skull Form for seven. Play Rune Rager Swarm for three. Attack with Rosetta Thorn for four. Like that's kind of ridiculous. That's 14 damage. The consistency of chain is really, really, really good. And I feel like there might be a situation in which they will falter to a hero like Icelander, because again, they are very aggressive in these matters. Uh, this might even be where Oldham comes into play. Ice is really kind of like the way to stop aggro. But even still, Chain being able to run a build that destroys his own shackles in order for him to then change up the game plan and go, okay, we're just going to block effectively and come in with Rune Chance instead. It's going to be a very, very interesting top eight. And I'm very curious to see where we come in. 
in regards to my, my my picks, right? But let me know what you guys think about the commoner format in the comments down below. I know there's very much so contention and there's always something in the commoner format. I mean, I cannot tell you the amount of dark horses that exist within this format. You could just be not paying attention whatsoever and all of a sudden, Arachne Solitary Confinement can win or just regular Arachne or maybe even Data Doll ends up winning. There's so many different factors to be put into place. There are people out here who have been testing heroes for years in regards to these play styles. And I truly believe that commoner is where there's a lot of adaptive meta changes that can happen in the matter of a, a few weeks. So keep that in mind when you are looking to build your deck for the commoner format. And if you're in the calling for the calling Portland, the 50th calling of flesh and blood, and you end up dropping out, lucky for you, you can go probably visit any booth or just pick up a bunch of bulk that you have at home, create a commoner deck, make sure you have it on you. So that way, if you drop from the calling, you can go join the battle hardened. And this battle hardened is going to be real quick. You know, it's blitz round timers, but significantly less powerful cards. So you're not going to be seeing, you know, any kind of super crazy burst turns and, you know, no one turn kill concepts in most situations. But it's going to be very different for a lot of people who have only been playing classic constructed and then moving into commoner. Just know that commoner does have its own ban list. So make sure to check that before you end up going to this event. Outside of that, there's no living legend list, so you don't have to worry about any of your heroes being banned from play. Just look at the cards that are banned in commoner and then make sure you're not having those cards inside of your deck. You should be all set to go. But I hope to hear from you all in the comments in regards to who you think is going to take down the commoner battle hardened in Portland at the end of November. And make sure to give the like button down below a little smooch. You can also subscribe to the channel if you wish to see more cool commoner content from this silly face here. And then on top of it, if you wanted to support the channel in a little bit more of a monetary way, you can go ahead and do that by becoming a channel member. Channel members certainly help us out here and uh, you know it makes the channel grow. I'm always appreciative of anybody's support, no matter what tier you can go into. And it just warms my heart to know that you'd be willing to do that for little old me. And I'm happy to continue making content for all of you fantastic Ash Wings out there. It's an absolute honor. So thank you all again so much for hanging out with me today as we talked about the commoner format and my top five picks for the commoner meta and the commoner battle hardened in Portland. And I hope you all continue having fun in the flesh and blood. And I will see all of you beautiful Ash Wings in our next video.